Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, this is going to be kind of a combination video. We're going to finish up what we started last week. Uh, it's a spindle adapter for my wood lathe. Put, so I can run my metal lathe chucks on my wood lathe. I, I made it once before and I messed it up and I'm remaking it. But I'll get into that in a minute. The other part of the video is going to be introducing a new threading tool. It's Mr. Whoopi's Auto Retract Threading Tool. Uh, kind of a funny name, but that's what he goes by. His real name's Craig. Uh, but it's a very impressive threading tool. And I, Now, I did have a lot of trouble with it, but I got it figured out. Uh, most of the problems I was having had nothing to do with his threading tool. Uh, there was one problem with the threading tool, but I think we got it resolved. Uh, but here's, here's what I got from last week. This was a adapter goes from inch and five eighths to inch and a <clears throat> no inch and a half to inch and five eighths. Uh, this is my chucks for my metal lathe, and, and that's the spindle on my wood lathe. I made it in my three jaw chuck, and I flipped it over so it's it's not concentric. Plus, I messed up these threads. Uh, it works, but it's not as concentric as I would like it to be. So I started make, remaking that last week, and this is the follow-up video, and I did it different. Uh, if you didn't watch last week's video, I, I mounted the adapter on a spin or on a piece of one-inch stock there, and uh, so, so that I could flip it over on this one inch stock and have it in my collet chuck and keep everything concentric. But what we're going to do with this new threading tool is make these threads right here. Here's the threading tool. Comes in AXA, BXA, and whatever that third size is, I can't remember. Three different sizes. Uh, this is the smallest one. Very well made. It's got a trigger right here that trips and it retracts and you reset it. Uh, to use it though, you've got to have a stop, and I made a stop, which is right there, and it, it's made kind of like a carriage stop. Now it doesn't have to be that elaborate, but it does have to be solid, because when this tool gets under load, this becomes a little bit harder to trip. In my original tool, I had it fail because my stop moved, so the stop has to be fairly solid. But I've had really good results now that I got it all figured out. It's made some fairly nice looking threads there, and you can see where it auto retracts. The retract is a little bit like it looks like there's a couple of grooves in it, but overall, it's very, very usable and looks pretty good. Uh, he recommends going straight in. In other words, feeding with the compound. I could not do that on my lathe. This is a fairly small lathe. He's got a South Bend Heavy, and he goes straight in with it. So if you've got a heavier duty lathe, you can probably go straight in. It's just too much load for this lathe. But it works really well. So that's the last thing I threaded and we're going to move on to the adapter and hopefully everything will go okay. Okay, let's go for a dry run here. Kind of scary, isn't it? Scary to me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to set, set the tip of my threading tool against the stock. Right there. And move in with my compound. About 20 thousandths on the first pass. And I'll shoot this from various angles. Obviously you, you can't be right in front of it because it's, it's where I'm standing. I hope this works good.
That was 20,000, so this is 10,000. Probably be able to do this in a lot fewer passes than what I'm going to do, but I don't want to mess this up. I'm going in five thousandths at a time. And I'm going to use some oil. I don't think that's deep enough, but I'm going to try the chuck. I don't know about you, but that's unnerving running up against that shoulder like that. Oh, look at there. That's a good fit. Well, let's see what the end of that thread looks like. Oh, beautiful. That looks good. Looks really good. There's what the, uh, where the threading tool backed out. It's like a double line there. That's because I was feeding with my compound. But it, it uh, doesn't hurt the function at all. That's a sweet looking thread. That was unnerving running up to a shoulder like that. But it worked out good. Well, there's my finished adapter. I might put some uh, flats on that to grab it with a wrench. But it's pretty much done. On the last one, see I got a hole all the way through this. On the last one I didn't have that hole, just had a blind hole here. But by drilling that hole I was able to make a mandrel in my collet chuck there and keep everything concentric. I put that on there to thread the inside and flipped it over to thread the outside. So it should be really concentric. I like it. Thanks, Craig. Yep, I'm very pleased with that. End result was outstanding. Well, let's take a closer look at this. It's made from an AXA tool holder. Some Fairly basic parts in there, but a whole lot of work went into that. I'll put a price list and a, a contact email down below, a couple of links. Very nicely made. Now, I mentioned uh, in the first part of the video, uh, I was having trouble getting this to work right. 
And the main problem was the tool post slipping. Now let me show you what I did to resolve that. I talked to, talked to Craig about it and he said that the AXA has more problems about that than the other two sizes. I presume because it's a smaller tool post and, and less surface area. But here's what I did to fix it. I took some of this stuff right here and it's kind of a, an abrasive mesh for drywall sanding. I just cut a square out of it like this. Doesn't have to be anything really critical size. Pulled it in quarters, clipped the corner off, and I put that underneath my tool post, and that worked great. And you can see it right here. Doesn't hurt a thing, and it definitely stops it from sliding. Works perfect. See what's happening every time that triggers and retracts, it acts like a little slide hammer and over a period of time throughout the threading process, it tries to rotate the tool post. But the mesh underneath there fixes it. Craig said he was going to do some things like try to lighten up the mass, the threading tool itself. Anyway, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.